I am Renata Petersen. Uh, I'm based in Guadalajara. I studied my art career in Mexico City in La Esmeralda. Uh, my family is half Mexican, half German. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a writer, but my dad is a writer. So when I started giving him like my stuff, he would be so harsh on me that, that I was like, I'm not gonna do this anymore. And I found a way to have a narrative with my work that is similar to what I wanted to do as a kid, but without like the, the pressure of doing it right. And also my mom is an anthropologist, so I kind of mix uh, my background, my, my home background in my work. It's narrative, but also with like an anthropological like overview. I, I like uh, the fact of turning an industrial product into an artisan product and making it look like it's industrial again. Like it's, it's a kind of play. Andy Warhol started with that, but uh, with like the Brillo boxes. But um, I think it's fun to, to try and do like an artisanal work as if it were as if it was a, like an industrial work. Like um, so, I started doing ceramics when I was in in in, in my bachelor's degree. Uh, I found it that uh, the the ceramic group was the most uh, pleasant one because I didn't like painters as much because they have like a big ego. I didn't like perform performers as much also because of the same thing. Uh, so I didn't really quite fit in sculpture or painting or performance. And I found that in, in, in the ceramic, you need help. Like you need help to, to put the killing on, to, to like to, for everything, you need help. And it's, so it's, it's a much more like collaborative process. Uh, even if you're not like uh, doing somebody else's work or, or, but you need help to, to do whatever you're doing. Even carrying stuff around, like it's- the clay is heavy. Yeah, the clay is he really heavy. Yeah. So I found it to be like a more collaborative process uh, and people were not, uh, like as egotistic as in other places, also because many things get broken. So you cannot be so attached yeah. to like the final product because you need to have like all the process being done and then see if it's gonna come out right. So that's how I started doing ceramics. And I've been doing it since 2015 probably. So I did this piece thinking about the domestic life in Mexico. It's like a, a weird story, but I, I found a, a, a store in a little town in Mexico where they sell uh, esoteric products and chemical products at the same time. It said, limpia togar, clean, clean your home. And it was like esoteric products, candles, quartz, this and that, but also chemicals like chloro, soap. And I thought it was like really funny how if you give something a significance, uh, the, se the semiotics of, of the objects change. So, so I, I thought about this piece, thinking about how we as Mexicans do that a lot. Like how, how we gave like an es esoteric value to something that is like an industrial made product. So that's how it started. It's how religio religion works as well. In Mexico, we have a lot of appearances. Like if you have a really dirty uh, plate, then suddenly, a virgin comes out of it, you know? Because of, of the figure, which is really easy to, to do. But there's a lot of appearances because of the, like, the significance people give it to like the, this kind of figure. It's a, it's a very Mexican brand. And even when Mexicans travel around or they live in another city, they take the sote. Because we think it's almost miraculous. Like it takes stains of like, we don't even compare it to Tide, you know? It's like, sote is a thing itself. And the color is very particular, also very Barragan type of color. So I think it's, it's, it's like a, a signature in the domestic life. Like everybody has 
sauté, and they will tell you it works for everything. I remember this this movie, uh, Big Fat Greek Wedding or something like that, where they used Windex for everything. We Mexicans use sauté for everything. Like, oh, you have ants in your plant. If you put sauté with water and then pour it, like you will end like the plague and we use it for everything. So it's, it's, a, it's a very like signature stamp of Mexican culture. I really like this minimalist term that it's called scatter piece. So it's just like, it has to seem as if it's scattered, but it's, you make it seem that way. So it's funny. I just like it that way. It's, it's very, like you can feel it's ceramic. And even if you, probably if you see it by far, you can think it's like an original sote soap. Yeah. But then if you touch it, probably you can see the work behind it. It seems like I have a message to give and I really, I prefer listening, like to see what is your opinion about my piece or what did it generate on you or on your vision or on your, you know, like I really, I'm not a big uh, sending out a message. I think it's, it's kind of like, um, prophetical and I don't like to do that. Because I'm really close to most of the artists here, I see a lot of anecdotes. Me and Sarabia work at the same fact, the ceramic factory. I know how hard it was for, for, for those monsters to come out of the killing. So when I see them, I, I see like the history behind it or or how this this piece was mounted in a studio and I remember like uh, a party where somebody got like uh, on top of Almanza's piece and he was like no 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 so I see anecdotes I, I see my friends and I see anecdotes and I really love seeing them together because it does speak of a of a tradition with, with crafts and modernity and I see a cohesion in, 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 in our work as a group of artists. How does it feel to be in Oklahoma? I love it here. Yeah. But yeah, it, 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 it has been, it's always a surprise. Funny, but it's a surprise. Like it's a growing city, it has like a lot of energy and people seem that way. So it feels like a great honor to, to be like uh, in communication, in dialogue with the, com with the Oklahoma community. <laughs>